Oh, okay. <laughs> How about that? So, how about that? So, okay. um, so really simple question. So, um, do I understand correctly that in your uh, framework, basically, first time you ingest any data set, you will have to go through the labors of finding the appropriate term for your uh, raw data term in, uh, in the in the template that you chose in to the use. template yes yeah. yes so, so and and actually what we're trying to do with this I, ha I haven't shown this part as well but we with the, ho the whole really idea that is we're trying to bring this sort of this whole really barrier about the the, yeah. the, the hatred about this ex exercise that everyone so much yeah. dislikes into more of a, a, a sort of a closer to the end user so um, so, so yes there might be sort of a bit of a learning curve at the beginning uh, but with, with trying to, again, push these templates in a way that sort of they're ready out of the box. So, and, and, and many of these things come with a default selection. So you really don't have to worry about which columns I should choose or not, right? Because if they come pre-selected for you. And then in this wizard, which I haven't shown, but again, we're enhancing a lot now, there could be some sort of suggested terms, and that's what we're actually okay. building in as well, so that we see, so one of the files that we use in the tests has vital signs for diabolic, uh, diabolic, uh, <laughs> <laughs> diastolic blood pressure, <laughs> diabolical <laughs> heart rate and all these things, and so there would be um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sort of a suggestion that these are vital signs yeah. and sort of get mapped to yeah. the template that is vital signs. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Anything. We are yeah, I was going to say, everybody who sits in the room has to donate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't get out the door unless you donate. Julia, well, I'm not sure if you were aware, but Merck has recently donated three DCGA data sets that we curate. So okay. It's from Bone and Breath and Ontario. Well, there are some type of restrictions for DCGA. Yeah. It says that you can use it, but you've got you to have, have a distinguished. Yeah. So remember before we tried to do that shrink wrap licensing? Yeah. And then we got the legal to do stuff, and then Keith got another lawyer in, and uh, other stuff was said. Have we, have we got round all of that? To do you, do you know what? I don't think we uh, did uh, went to uh, extensive loops to uh, do anything there. Um, so if you were understanding it, that you cannot share, you can't distribute it, and that. But I know that I know Keith talks about um, sort of like the, if you've processed it, that you've altered it, that that maybe you can or whatever. So. Okay. Before we put that out there, we um, we we probably probably need to talk to Keith and that to. Do you know anything, Peter? Sorry. Do you know because like the issue was that you can copyright it once you've done the curation. So you can get some copyright for it. Right. Right. So that, but then, well, then the hive are going to have to sign it away, and that that they the, the, there could be some. I mean, who's going to take responsibility for it, right? Good question. Yeah. 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 So when they donate. It, Not donate, they moved it. They moved it, but I think right. it's, it's following the same. It's, it's following the exact same, same guidelines. Yeah, if so you, if you level yeah. one, you, you have to So get if somebody gets it from the foundation's wiki page and, and downloads it, but doesn't have approval to use it, who's going to be liable? Yeah. It's the foundation now. <laughs> <laughs> There was a question. Yeah, it's about data sharing from other groups. So we have
have some projects engaged with Edrix, right? And then uh, working on one specific project called Etionomy, we see how difficult it is to get data from the partners of this project to their own project. <laughs> so this means that I think that the foundation could approach somehow the projects that Etrix supports so that um, these projects like, I don't know, OncoTrack or Predictive Lead and many different projects running in Europe, mm -hmm. we could also share data from these projects uh, into the foundation. I think that would be very easy because if they can do it within their own projects, I think it would be willing at least to release it for a broader uh, community like the Plasma Foundation. But, but, but unless the foundation becomes a member in all of these consortiums, <laughs> Yeah, then uh, they won't be because they, they even they amongst they them they don't even share that i mean we've always had problems with different sites <coughs> having to sort of we try to to push that for them and they were like we'll have to get these signatures from like i don't know 30 different sites within that one project to actually even share the data amongst them yeah. and then some of them don't want to like track tbi that you that for example yeah. yeah so i i they want to publish first so i don't think that they uh, they'll have relationships and collaborations But the thing that we should keep in mind is, is that we, uh, the data owners within their organizations, I think that um, they, they solve the issue within their groups. But when it comes to releasing for <coughs> multiple partners in the consortium, then it comes like um, the limit of whether this data will be available or not for sharing outside of the consortium. Yeah. And I, I think that would be one first place to track uh, where there is available data from there somehow to push or to request that this data, you know, to in kind be uh, donated to so, the public. So we try, so like, we, we kind yeah. of, I like the hype philosophy yeah. on things, so we try to get everything open for the public to kind of every time we get things to do something, we have to put it into the public domain. And that, and we're, we're often told no. And, yeah, that, yeah. and, um, and so we, we did, when we started publishing that, so we created data for GSK, the Eclipse data. Yeah. And so, so I said, hey, because then they decided after we, we pushed them and pushed them and said no, 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 and then now they put it in DB Gap. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, great, now it's in DB Gap. Can we give the transplant stuff to the, to the community? And so DSK went to their lawyers and they said no. one do you choose, right? Yeah. And, and that you, you can figure it out. And so I think we need to probably sort of like <coughs> regroup and take a look at that and come up with some policy or rules in that so everybody's protected. So if I'm not wrong, there is a, a guideline for the reusability of the clinical data that is adopted in the So that the correct name of the document is uh, clinical attention. Start the pack. So can I try to say something? Okay. So uh, guys, I, I, I think we should uh, look at the, um, you know, coming from, uh, I don't know, scientific background. I, I, I believe that you look at things that do work and do basically the same until you find things that don't work. And so one of the examples that I, I would like to, to give is actually Anita Bandrovsky, who was um, here earlier. She works right here at UCSD, developed this awesome service called SciGraph uh, for ontology lookup services. Okay. 
open source. Okay. Um, and so <laughs> you can look, uh, look it up and use it. So, but what she did before was a very cool thing. It's an example of how you can change stuff if you know what, where, whom to ask and what to ask. So she basically went to, um, and I'm going to pronounce it wrong, to the publisher, Elsevier, and she said, okay, why don't we implement the standards where when the researchers at least submit their data, I mean publication, and they want to describe an essay, they at least provide ontologies IDs with all of the terms that they have there. Yeah. And they eventually agreed to that. So that's been operational for, she said, two years and or a but year she, and a half. She assigned an ID number. So, and so like Thermo Fisher or Life Technologies and that, they all had to be assigned an ID number. The well, reproducibility of experiments. Exactly. Right. But that but she developed it to, it, it's for tracking. So every time you're going to run a search, it's going to do this the right way. Mm -hmm. And so um, the way she did, well, not she, but the team she worked with so did. Yeah, it's, it was a big team. It was a big effort. It wasn't an IH grant. It was, obviously, she didn't do it all by herself. But the, <laughs> the thing was that they made a little tool, which they distribute. It basically like a little button on the submission website. So every time you submit a publication, it checks your abstract and says, uh, we think this cell line is this, and it has this ID. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And all you do is say yes or no. Yeah. When you say this, you mean it's, it's an ontology term from some Yeah, some so ontology somebody sa says ATCC and it goes and looks it up in whatever uh, cell line ontology there is, CLO probably, and so then they pick out mm -hmm. the ID mm -hmm. and it get, gets tagged. When you publish, it's not visible, but electronically it's stored there. So any lookup services that you do find the stuff. So my po point <coughs> is that when she needed to do that, she went directly to the publisher. So one of the issues I see with data sharing is this fighting who, who published first, mm -hmm. right? So let's go to the publisher and say, introduce a new field. I pulled the data on September 1st of 2016. And even though I published three years later, I still have a precedence over you who pulled data on September 2nd. You can do that. You can propose things and they probably eventually will agree. And so that way you at least can uh, encourage people to deposit stuff faster. I'm thinking of one repository that we all use. It's GeoRepository. It's the only f truly free one, right, that I know about? Are express? And, and mm -hmm. express its cousin. Because <laughs> I used to work at Express. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what did they do differently? Mm. Yeah? Geo has no rules, mm -hmm. but Express does. <laughs> No, but I mean, no. so it's, it's, a, it's a different domain and it's a far simpler focused domain, I, I have to say as well, that makes things a lot So again, take what easier. works, yeah. use it, yeah. right? So no rules, but that's probably not realistic. We need a DC lobbying committee. That's what I'm saying, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what really worked for the other, for specifically for microarray data, I mean, at some point, all of these um, big publishers, they said, Unless you want to get your paper published, you'll have to deposit your data in a in, right. a, in a repository, and then the repository take, took it upon their own sort of um, um, yeah. responsibility to actually st try to enforce these standards on them now. So if you go to a trace best and actually Geo as well, and actually Philippe now because we were all in that sort it's of uh, mage tabs, it mage tabs and all that stuff that yeah. actually started the whole ball going on because people had to map the data and do these things unless uh -huh. in order to get the publication out. And sort of was it was sort of a carrot. Uh, stick thing and I think Philippe can add a lot to that. Uh, yes, I just wanted to mention um, going back to the point of involving the, the publishers, I think that's that's hitting the nail on the head. We need to involve more uh, the, the key uh, uh, players that, that are the only one to, to be able to enforce um, use of standards. And then we need the further the publishers and and uh, the people looking at the databases. Um, so that if we get the funders to say you have to deposit format uh, in those repositories, then we already reduce a bit um, the uh, heterogeneity of, of what we, we obtain. And, and then people can indeed use the RRID schema for referencing the identifiers that they've obtained from the public repository in their publication, enhancing the, 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 the referencing of publications in data sets. And then we go back to the notion of their principles, where this is what it is all about, to make sure that uh, entities uh, describing molecular entities, cell lines are identified correctly. 
correct IDs with correct resources or at least the resources that can be identified. So we know what we, what we when we access the data set, we know what we are buying. Yeah. And yeah. As, as, Julie, as Julie pointed out, we, the, the reason that uh, the, you could go to the journals and say you need to have these standard identifiers for all these things is for reproducibility. And it was solving one of the journal's biggest problems is everybody's complaining that the journals aren't reproducible, so they were highly motivated to take on a solution. In the same way, funders are scratching their head wondering how much difference are we making with the funded? We want to track our grant, and the only way we can do it now is publication. How much better of a way to track the funding is usability of the data? Yeah, the, the, the carrot and sticks are all wrong, right, at the moment, and we, and we need to change. And so people, and, and I've talked to people on both sides, so it's like I'm asking them to share, and they say, do you know what, we'd love to share. But I have people saying, share your data, share your data, but when then I share it with them, and somebody goes and publishes it and uses an algorithm, I say, oh, can I have your algorithm? They go, no, 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 it's proprietary, and oh, I'm publishing with it. So he's like, then they get the paper out first, and that, then they, they get all the grant money, and then he can't see his people. So then he doesn't want to share, and it's not that, like, as a person he's horrible or whatever, he's just, the carrots and sticks are wrong, right? So you can understand why, why they're doing it. But if grantors say you need to put the data into this story, then people have to, but why would grantors do that? Well, the reason they do it is because they need to have ways to justify the value of all the grant. Using them in publication data is not getting them what they want. You explain the story to the grantors about it's all about the data and making it available. Now, we don't understand that, that they've got a huge initiative to try to do that, to put all the data in the same story. So to um, do that, it's to go to the grantors to get them to pay attention to and even extending it onto, we've got some foundations here as well, but I think the the academic carrot and sticks is also sometimes it's going to foundations, right? Because then the foundations want to give money to academics to find cures for their diseases and that, but then they, um, they work the old way that they say, well, I'm not going to share my data and that until, you know, until I've published. And we've said to, you know, some of the foundations, it's like, you've got the money, right? You make the rules and that. It's like, if you want to work with this foundation and if you want to sort of, you know, you get this money, then you will you'll give the data immediately, right? And it's but it, it, it's it's shaking things up, right? So just to do better to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lobbying, to lobbying game. <laughs> it's a lobbying game. So yes, foundation should start lobbying then with all these different. Well, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm into doing lobbying. Yeah. Um, all right. So then, if, if we can wrap it up, and um, so we're at twelve thirty. So like any final closing statement? I just wanted <laughs> no I just had the suggestion I was uh, listening to Samantha's talk and I thought awesome idea your talk was also great you know can we like enforce some of the standards during the ETL procedure and that's an open-ended question I'm gonna stop right there <laughs> I, I, I know the answer is yes <laughs> Um, and so maybe we, um, especially people in this room who do have development capabilities, uh, maybe start thinking about next iteration of ETL tools where we at least can enforce, maybe not all the way to the child node, but at least a couple of layers in, and we have that enforced. Like if you see co concomitant medications and somebody is attempting to put it like, I don't know, five nodes deep, you say, no, it's, so it has to be here, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's probably quite simple. Yeah. I don't know. That should be in the acceptance of the is community, I guess. I, well, I then think they, uh, then it's, it's all about the, the tooling. Well, yeah. then they don't have to use the ETL loader, right? They yeah, have the tool. I think this touches much deeper than just ETL. This is something that should be uh, tackled in really in the database layer, in giving the right properties to whatever concept you well, give. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Very good. So I think this is really the solution. Is the, the semantics of what a concept is in transformer should not be in the tree. It should be in, in the, in the de layer deeper. De and actually also yeah. have to facilitate it in our way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take this time to plug that tomorrow there's a session on data standards. And hopefully we can continue this discussion. Yeah. Thank you everybody for your talks and the
Johnny. Thank you.